Thank you for joining us for um, this panel today. Uh, we are going to be discussing trans in theater. So we have um, a group of panelists that are going to give us some stories and experiences um, with them identifying as trans in the theater industry and other entertainment industries that we deal with. Uh, my name is Sammy. My pronouns are she, her, and they, them. And I'm going to be the moderator today um, to lead us through this panel. So we're going to start off, um, first off thanking our sponsor who is an other theater um, that has given us this opportunity to share our voices and share our stories. Um, if you would mind, go to their website. Um, you can see it at the and other theater uh, square right there to donate um, for further education that they're going to have, as well as help small theaters that are really trying to find new opportunities and creative ways to go through what we're going through right now in a pandemic and not able to do as many live shows as we want um, and in the ways that we've done it before. So what we're gonna do is we're going to introduce um, our panelists. Um, they're gonna tell you their names, their pronouns and any artistic endeavors that they have. So um, Danielle, would you like to start for us? Sure, uh, my name is Danielle Tenerelli and I usually act, um, sometimes direct, it's not super common. Um, it was a while ago, actually pre-transition, I did way more, I actually haven't directed post. Um, uh, basically, I am in, uh, at the moment, I'm an illustrator and graphic designer, and that's how I pay the bills. Awesome. Thank you so much, Danielle. And what are your pronouns? Mm. Uh, she, her. Thank you. Awesome. And then let's move to Miles. Hi, I'm Miles. My pronouns are he, him. And I have done, I've loved theaters for a long time, ever since I was like a preteen and I, uh, I am not doing a lot of theater right now, but I still am hoping to do some in the future. So I'm excited about that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Miles. Jay? Hi, my name is Jay White. I use they, them, and theirs pronouns. I am a performing artist currently located in Salt Lake City. Uh, I do a lot of theater and musical theater, but also some film and TV, little directing and choreography here and there. Right now, you know, I've been blessed with a couple of really great digital theater opportunities in the past year, but I'm actually currently working on a music video for a new recording artist uh, going by the name Boy Mundane. So definitely keep an eye out for the really cool work happening there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jay. And Pan. Hi, I'm Pan Lynn, or I also have credits under Mel Howarth. Um, either is fine. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, and I am a costume designer. I mostly do stuff in Utah County, but occasionally do stuff in Salt Lake City as well. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you all so much for joining us um, and for sharing. So we're going to start off with just a couple of uh, questions. I like to start this off in a very positive note because things are changing. A lot of what we've experienced in the past is in the past and it's not as, I wouldn't say traumatizing but it's not as prevalent to have terrible experiences and a lot of people are learning from those experiences so I want to ask first what positive experiences in theater have you had that has shaped your expression as an artist so anyone can open up and start talking if you want to um, about your experiences um, I can start. I recently well recently as in a year ago because I did nothing for the last year, obviously. Um, I, I uh, played in Guys and Dolls. I got to play um, General Cartwright. And that was fun because um, it's, not the, it's not the first role I've had post uh, transition, but it is the first role I've had like, it was an actual role. It wasn't just chorus or background or whatever. And um, it was kind of fun because, see, I transitioned in 2004 and, um, I, and I was considered young then. Let's see, I was 20, 23, 
and um and at the time that was young and uh i just kind of assumed that i wouldn't do theater at all and if i did i felt like i had to do something that was i hate to say the word super girly that that's almost was my mindset at the time so i did you know like chorus and things like that just to do it uh, that came eventually and then when I did this general cart right, I did it in a, um, let's see, I was stealth for quite a while um, um, from transition to 2017, about 2016, 17. And um, I actually, with this, with this role, I didn't worry about stealth or uh, trying to be female-y or trying to be extra girly or anything like that. I just straight up did it. And I actually kind of did it in a uh, characterization of like half Frank, half, half Dr. Frankenfurter and half, um, I, I want to say Matt Berry. I don't know if you know who Matt Berry is. but I love like Matt Berry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I've loved Matt Berry since like IT crowd or IT, <laughs> IT crowd, yeah. But like, I did it like a half and half and people, nobody said anything. Nobody was like, are you really a man? Are you this and that? And no, in fact, and I, I don't know if anybody, I think people just thought I was just a weird woman. <laughs> I don't know, but it was actually very liberating. And um, I kind of came to the conclusion that it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be like super feminine and you don't have to do stuff like that when you're doing theater, you know, personal life, whatever. But when you're doing theater and stuff, you can go for outrageous characters. And um, I, I pigeonholed myself into that. And when I broke out, I was like, yeah, I just don't really care. I think it'll be fun to do any kind of character really. And I think that's the future, the future. <laughs> no, I don't know. I hope, I hope it is. We'll see. That's I love it so much because uh, some of the roles I've done were, um, I actually got to play Mercutio in high school. And it was my oh, yeah. favorite role because even though they technically were like turned Mercutio into a girl, it was still fun because I got to be like this brass human because I yeah. still had the characteristics of being this very obnoxious and outgoing and like aggressive person. And it was the first time that I literally had a role that was like, juicy like I could really go into whatever I wanted and bring that character to life and I love I love General Cartwright I actually played her too and I oh. love the character because she's so aggressive and just yeah. like in your face and it's fun to have those characters that you can really kind of expand what you think your capabilities are and what you think you perceive yourself and especially in theater I'm grateful for those roles that give you that that whole imagination like you can just take it and and run with it that's awesome and I, I've always been a character actor I've never had a serious uh lead you know even even pre-transition I was always character and so um with General Cartwright it was it was easy because it's such a throwaway role but it's also really very funny and people were like oh you you stole the show you you know you outdid it you outdid nicely and it's weird but um to hear that but it, it was strange so it was very liberating I'll just say that much and that's kind it. of the thing from now on in my career um doing doing theater out here I think I'm going to go for those uh those kind of characters like the the funny um kind of outrageous just maybe it doesn't have to be outrageous but just something that's uh, I can put my, my own twist on and things like that. So. Awesome. Thank you so much. Anyone else has any positive experiences, anything in theater that has really shaped them as an artist? Yeah, I really, especially to bounce off of Danielle, what she was saying about just creating 
anything and everything, you know, not putting yourself in any sort of pigeonhole. That's like really a big mission of myself as a performer. And like a big part of my non-binary identity is that I like to be the blank canvas for whatever, you know, story I want to tell. I don't want, you know, my body or identity to define the stories that I have the opportunity to tell. So I really resonated with that. And there have been some really great opportunities I've had, especially over the past five years that have not only shaped my artistry, but also really helped to shape my identity. Like the first time I got to play like a really openly queer character on the stage was in this beautiful play called Big Love by Charles Mee or Chuck Mee. And um, the script itself has like a very loose quality. Uh, Chuck Me really allows the creative team and the performers to take liberties with it in whatever ways that they see fit for the, you know, group that they have there. And I was playing the character of Giuliano and in the end, in this particular production, um, there is a, a wedding in the show and the character of Juliana, who was like a pretty like kind of effeminate gender queer, but like world traveler type, you know, who lived on this villa in Italy <laughs> um, by the end, actually at the wedding came out in, I was in full drag in a wedding dress. It was the first time that I had like full presented. It was crazy. I had to do it in 21 minutes, like go from nothing to like, will be padded like lashes you know uh like a full hair piece I had a team <laughs> I had like three dressers helping me get ready for this as I'm just there like taking on a new face and like redrawing my eyebrows it was so much it was so hectic but it was so much fun and um my favorite thing about it was so many times because I would, I would come out in the beginning, I had this big veil, like you had no idea who it was because you saw a bunch of the different brides in the wedding like come out and they got to, you know, have their interest and they were like, oh wait, this isn't out of, there's another person, like, who is this? And then, you know, I got to take off the veil and sing Ave Maria, like covered in highlighter and this glowing light. And it was just like the most exciting experience and my favorite thing is when sometimes people would come up at the end and like see me after the show like in my normal clothes but then also in my like drag makeup still and they were like oh my god it was Giuliano like they didn't make the connection that they thought it was a whole new actress like I would so that was very satisfying to know that I uh you know snatched it that hard <laughs> even the photographer for the show when we were doing our shoots like thought that it was a whole different person at first um and I knew him well I had worked with him so many times before it was so fun and from that I was really able to realize that sort of blank canvas attitude that I take toward creating a character because there's just, you know, so many possibilities and there are so many stories out there that you can find a way to make fit for yourself. Since then, I've played other non-binary characters that were like completely written for me. I've been able to play like cis female identifying characters, cis male identifying characters, which is like also really fun for me too, because it's just a new story to tell. Um, but it really, as far as like bringing my queerness into my art, that was like really the precipice for that. I love that so much. I also loved that wedding dress. I'm not going to lie. That was my favorite look I've ever seen. Um, it was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Jay. Anyone else? Um, I'd like to say something real quick. So I actually also saw that production of Big Love. And I don't remember, I don't know if you remember, but I totally came up to you after the show. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I saw your poster in in the lobby and I was like they them and then I was like <gasps> so like I knew immediately I was like that that is Jay right there just like <laughs> damn like that was a beautiful moment for me and I was just like I was so like nervous and like a little starstruck to like come talk to you after the show because ooh it was that was good gender feels for me too <laughs> so, yes I remember meeting you like, we've been faithful character. friends ever since <laughs> <laughs> Hey Jay, I, I, I have to I have to say that I just looked it up and <laughs> wow, that is impressive. Right? You know, like besides look and all of that, that must have been um extremely liberating. And I like even me, like you know, 15 years ago, the, to look like that and to do something like that on stage would be so unbelievable in my mind that I just, I, I wouldn't, I don't even know how to even explain it. So good job. <laughs> yeah. 
you you definitely stole the spotlight like mm, so good um i would also have to say that uh theater and my experience in theater has really shaped my trans identity actually um not just by the people that i got to know through theater but also like my experiences because I do I have also acted um I do mostly do costume design um but you know those those starting roles in like high school where we don't have enough boys in the cast so you get to be a boy now and I'm like but but maybe could I be a boy forever though yes yes exactly. like, I mean I'm non-binary but like <laughs> may, maybe I could be a boy forever um <laughs> so Probably my best experience has actually been with Anne others. So like good job, folks. Um, so I haven't acted in years and I was like, let's audition for a show called The Drag. That sounds great. Um, so I got to play uh, the sexy, the two sexy men in that show that everybody's hitting on the whole time, um, which was just a treat, honestly. Um, <laughs> I, ooh such such a good time but like there was never I was never like needed to be like fully totally masked they were like you can play this character like as hard masculine or as like femme or whatever you want to do like you go ahead and do what you want to do and I'm like but really though it was hmm. those are my Excellent. favorite roles yeah those are my favorite roles <laughs> I literally did a role that was originated by Noel Coward so like the most feminine man on the planet and they were like you do you and I was like oh you are not ready for how ridiculous this character is going to be like every time I walked on stage everyone's like show's over done we don't need to be on stage anymore I'm like yes this role was made for me I love those roles love them also I need to check out the drag that sounds like an amazing show gonna write that down that was like another theater right yes it's by may west so ooh, yeah. fun okay i'm writing that down right now um, i love oh go ahead oh no go ahead miles oh uh, i was just gonna say i love hearing um all these stories it's so great um mm -hmm. i was just gonna share an experience i had which was the f in high school which um the very first time i was cast in a male role and I was freaking out because I know like at the time I, it was important to me, especially that I wanted to be in a male role. Like kind of like Danielle said, you wanted to be more like feminine, especially at that time that you came out or, you know, and the same for me, I wanted to be especially masculine because yeah, um, but I wore, it wasn't as magnificent as that wedding dress sounds, but I wore this like suit and on stage and I just remember feeling so confident and like, wow, someone cast me in a male role for the first time. Because before it was like, well, I don't want to play a, a female role, but no one will cast me in a male role. so. <laughs> I just am like usually the ensemble who's like, you know, which was always fun, of course, but. Um, what was the part? Oh, um, so yeah, so it was in high school. Um, it's this play called A Piece of My Heart. I don't know if you've heard of it. I love that. I love yeah. that show so much. Yeah, so I don't remember the uh, name of the character, but um, he was, I played a couple different male characters, but. Um, I just really was just so happy that my uh, theater teacher was so, you know, confident mm -hmm. in me and it made me confident in myself and in any future productions I did. So, <laughs> yeah. I love that so much. That's the one thing I feel like high school, you kind of get a chance to because there's literally not enough people and so they just throw you into places which I'm grateful for but I wish that it like would become more prevalent in the fact that there's more opportunities that you could get um, actors to do because they're literally a blank canvas they're 
their everything you want them to be if you lead up to that. Um, I'm going to transition into a different question that's going to be a little bit more of what we have experienced negatively. So those negative experiences can bring um, pain and be, can be triggering, but they often bring light on how we can be a better, be better as a community. So what experiences or microaggressions have you had in the past that could have been handled better? Do you have any that are really prevalent that you could share that are you're willing to share? Well, I have one. And listen, kids, this was a different time. <laughs> Okay, so when I, the very first show I did, um, I, I, it was, it was funny thing happened to the way to the forum and I played gymnasia. So I was one of the courtesans and uh, it was awesome. Um, it was the very first show I did post-transition and uh, it was extremely like liberating, but this was, this was in the 2000s and I, I can't stress enough how different that time was, uh, even I, I completely different than today, but even completely different than five years ago. It's amazing. Anyway, um, so I was still, uh, I was still stealth. I was still deep stealth. I don't know. Do they still use that term? Like when you, I don't know if you don't, I don't think you have to anymore because I think you can just be, you know, you can, you can like, it's more aware. But back, you know, in, in Utah in 2008, it was like, you're either female or male and nobody thought otherwise, <laughs> if you, you know, if you can pull it off. And um, so I finally did that and I auditioned, got it, whatever. Um, I didn't quite know that people, I didn't know anybody knew because I didn't know any, this was all new people. I, I had never met anybody. And um there was a, there was somebody in the show who did know me vaguely um, pre-transition, like in the late nineties and kind of put two to two, two and two together, I guess. Of course, didn't say anything to me, went to the director and made a, not a big stink, <laughs> but more like, oh, you know, we just, we, it's, it's just a, it's a safety thing you know, and it's a, it's a, a I'm, I'm a, I don't know what the conversation was because it wasn't there, but I'm assuming it had to do with dressing rooms, bathrooms, all that. Um, and so all of a sudden the director and a few people were just so sour at literally everything I did at rehearsals and just saying like, there was this thing, cause I was a courtesan. So I was trying to be sexy. And there was this part where I like spanked my butt, <laughs> my butt. It was just the thing, whatever. And before that, it was it just killed. But all of a sudden, one day, the director was like, um, Danielle, I need you to stop doing that. That's really disturbing. And I was like, that's weird. <laughs> and so um, I, I just didn't really know. And then people would look at me and just and like look down. And I'm like, oh, okay, I, I something, okay, I, I know this, I know this feeling. And uh, I was talking to somebody and they were like, oh, um, you need to talk to the director. And I was like, what about? And they're like, well, we don't know, but the director is really mad at you for some reason. And I was like, Ugh. I was like, somebody, 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 somebody know, somebody knows. It's obvious. So I went to the director and he's, you know, to his credit, he was nice. But I, I don't think he knew how to handle the situation. He was relatively young at the time. Um, he was like in his early 20s. So I don't know if. I don't know if it was his first experience. I don't know. I, I don't, I honestly don't know, but um, he was, you know, saying like, you know, Dave came up. I'll just say Dave. That's just, a, it's not a name. It's just a name. Dave, Dave came up and said, um, he told me all about you and he knew, he knew you from there and blah, blah, blah. And he knew this and he, he was dating such and such who knew all this stuff. And I was like, okay. And he was just like, well, you know, I'm going to leave it up to you. I'm going to let you decide the ball. The ball is in your court was what he said. And I'm like, in, in what regard? And he's like, well, you know, if you just don't feel like you want to be in the show, then I'll just leave that up to you. I'm like, I have no interest in not being in the show. 
I was everything was fine until literally last night rehearsal or yesterday's rehearsal. And now today I'm in this strange situation. And it was it was extremely dev. I I should have seen it coming. I, I think I was being too cocky and thinking that I could just go in with this new group of people and literally nothing was going to go wrong. And th these are the kind of things you had to worry about back then. Nowadays, I really don't think that's an issue. And I think that's wonderful. I absolutely think that's wonderful. Um, and that's kind of why I got back into theater is I just don't think it matters now. I, I, maybe it still does. I'm sure it still happens to an extent. But, um, you know, these were relatively liberal people and this was 2008. So it wasn't like, a, you know, this wasn't the eighties or something but it was, it was still very devastating. And I ended up not leaving. Um, and I actually uh, got in touch with the director. He still does stuff all over Utah now. Um, I talked to him a few years ago, a couple of years ago, and we just totally made amends. And he was like, you know, I was too much, I was too immature. I didn't understand. I didn't have kids. Like I just, um, he was just not ready. And he was just like, I really wish I would have handled that differently. And I had kind of just gotten over it anyway. But when I think, when I did this, when I eventually decided to do Guys and Dolls last year, I said on the first, uh, first rehearsal, uh, you know, when you do a good director will have everybody introduce themselves on first uh, rehearsal. I firmly believe that because if you don't, then you don't know who any, I don't know. Anyway, that's another story. <laughs> but I said, um, I just want you all to know that I am trans. Uh, uh, male to female. Um, I did it in 2004 and when I was relatively young. So I've been around and um, that's the way it goes. <laughs> and I was like, if, you know, if anybody has a problem with this, please let me know. And, and nobody did. I think some guy hinted it, but I, I didn't care. I was more concerned about how the, how the ladies on the show felt, you know, because I was going to be in the dressing room with them and Honestly, not none of them had an issue, not one. And I didn't really expect they would, but you know, <laughs> but I gotta tell you, that was that was definitely my worst, my worst situation. But I, I have to I have to say it was a different time. And I don't think it's it's hard to explain because you just you have to know that that was like if you get outed, then it's like it's devastating. And um that's what I was terrified of, but that was my worst. Thank you so much for sharing, Danielle. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah, I feel like there it is uh, definitely a different time where it's not as much of you becoming a pariah if something comes out. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of us are a little bit more able to be comfortable in ourselves and how we identify outwardly than in the past for sure um thank you so much for sharing uh i definitely have had microaggressions um nothing that is too severe but um i've only i came out as non-binary a couple years ago and i think the biggest struggle is something that is becoming more of a easy process and it is just now all of a sudden all of my coworkers in some of my theaters like my tech crew and stuff like that just didn't know what to do and were too afraid to ask my pronouns because they weren't used to having someone that they need to ask their pronouns and so it was one of those moments where I would have to have these awkward conversations out of nowhere that I'm more than willing to answer and help, but definitely had people that literally cornered me to be like, well, are you a girl now? Are you a boy? What is this? I don't understand. And I'm like, okay, cool. Can we finish the show? I have no time right now backstage. Thank you very much. Um, and so I think it's a different age and I think it's just more of people understanding that it doesn't really matter about their comfortability as long as it's not a, like a dangerous thing. If you feel threatened, that's a situation we need to discuss. But I feel like a lot of people are not used to being out of their comfort zone in the fact that it's something new to them. 
And I think that's the biggest struggle right now is the microaggressions of like, that's weird and not the weird I like. So I don't know what to, how to handle it. So that is mostly the microaggressions I've experienced in the last couple of years. Um, they've changed dramatically, even in workplaces. I feel like it's changed dramatically because my place that I work is really prevalent on making sure that people understand pronouns and respect them and respect people. So that's, it's progressing slowly, but surely <laughs> I feel. I also totally feel that progression to Sammy. Like when I started my undergrad, um, the first year I was there, I, I, just identified like as cis gay, like I hadn't really had the space before moving to college to really even understand any part of my queerness or like the safety to understand any of it. So, but I was very, I, I was still a very effeminate person. Like I expressed myself on a day-to-day -day basis in a very feminine way. And, so, but you know, I was in a college commercial musical theater program there were plenty of gays like we were all you know we were in ballet like we all were like our leggings to ballet and had our nails painted and like it was just like the thing and a set of shows were coming up that uh like one of them was about soccer and the troubles in Ireland and it required like a, a large masculine base which you know we all had the capabilities of do through our acting training and uh, I think most of us understood that we probably wouldn't go into auditioning for soccer player characters and with their nails painted and things but there were uh members of the faculty at that time who needed to make it known that we weren't allowed to do that like that in all of our classes had like a big time that was like okay now listen boys like you can't come into this audition with your nails painted and with your makeup done like you need to look like real boys for this one sort of thing and like when we all heard, you know, it was like, okay, well, I'm a freshman. Maybe they're just like, you know, really covering all the bases with us because they think that we don't know how to audition for anything. But then I would talk to my upperclassmen friends who were also queer and they'd be like, oh, no, 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 we got that speech yesterday too. And we were like, the frick, you know? Um, so it kind of became one of those things where, you know, we were like, you can't tell us to do that. Like, absolutely we will. We know how to audition for something, but like, no, that's not cool. I mean, I was even, I, my hair was totally different then, but it was still pretty long on the top. And I always wore it up in like a little tiny top knot when I was in ballet all morning. And, um, you know, it was even like, I got pulled extra side. They were like, you know, you can't wear your hair up like that too. So, okay. I just got a message saying that swearing is totally okay. So, uh, <laughs> when I said frick earlier, I definitely meant fuck. Um, just to backtrack that. Uh, so, check that one off the box um but yeah it was one of those things where it's just like you know I think since then they've really grown there was a character that I ended up playing in the ensemble where it was like the we were the dance ensemble was four of us and it was three girls and me and I was out as non-binary then and I was the only one that they put in like slacks and a vest and like honestly these really cool shoes so I'm, I'm not that mad about it because the shoes are really cool but after the show the director was even like I think my biggest regret is that I just didn't put you in the dress. Like when you mentioned something at the, on the first day of rehearsal, I was like, Ooh, I'd wear the dress. And you know, everyone was like, ha ha, you know, Oh, Jay, the super gay. Like, cause that's for, for a while. I think that that is how people approach my identity is that it was just like a really excessive gay rather than like understanding that it was a transness. Cause maybe I, I didn't all, necessarily always understand that myself, you know, we're all on our own journeys. Um, but it was nice to see that by the time that I graduated that program four years later, that not only was I, I, I was no longer the only non-binary person, like there are many non-binary people in the program now, but I was given opportunities to explore that. And I, you know, in the, the staff and faculty, they're really committed to learning and growing in that as well. I really love hearing that because it's hard when you're in an educational place and things are happening that you feel shouldn't be happening but you don't know how to approach it because they're literally teaching you how to be who you're wanting to be in life and in your career and so it's a it's a fine line of what should be changed and what should be okay to address um, I think the strict gender roles in educational theater is 
is a struggle for me mostly because I've never fit in any of those gender roles whatsoever. And thankfully that made it so that I got to play some cool roles, but it was more out of necessity of having a body rather than being like, you have the capabilities of doing this because you're a good actor and that's Mm -hmm. it. So thank you so much for sharing, Jay. I appreciate that. Anyone else has any experiences? Um, Yeah, I have. um, I guess I've just, I've gotten a couple like comments is mainly the only like thing, but it's still like, it's really uh, frustrating sometimes. And I remember one time I was at a theater competition and I was doing a monologue, that's what I was competing with, and um, I, it was a male character, and basically the judge said, um, I don't remember it word for word, they said in their, my notes was something like, you don't exactly fit like, this gender do like the gender you're born with or like do the gender that you are, which they were basically saying, you're a female, do a female, try doing a female monologue next time. And I was like, <laughs> you know, cause they either didn't realize I was transgender or they didn't care, I don't know, but they just, it was a little frustrating and know but I guess that's my my story so that is frustrating especially for a competition because you're literally competing just saying how amazing you are at acting so why wouldn't it be a good monologue that you don't have to base it off of your gender I thank you for sharing that frustrates me and now I'm literally about to like find that judge for you smack them around um <laughs> uh, thank you somebody so much. just they're in, they're inserting their own value into something where it, it's not not only is it uncalled for but it's none of their business yeah it's a competition yeah. it wasn't like if you're because i mean stuff like that happens to me and or it did and it's like um this isn't like a class you know like an opinion class if it's a competition and a judge tells you judge shouldn't really probably be giving you any advice or anything like that anyway like no because no, it's it based off of your technicalities like it's based yeah. off of the actual drama the acting like any of that it's not based off who you are as a person it's just the so, technique but yeah i don't know he was like 80 years old or something <laughs> he's really old and well that explains everything yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's really frustrating. I mean, no one's saying you can't play Yertle the turtle because you're not a turtle. So, I I say that <laughs> you you have to be a turtle to yeah. be able to play yeah, that that's role. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Miles. Pan, I know you unmuted for a brief second. Oh, I'm ready. Uh, yeah. Um, so I actually back in the day, um, used to be like really into acting. And um, this is even before I like realized I was trans, but like I realized that I was intensely uncomfortable playing like typical female roles and that's all people would cast me in um, because of my body shape, which, you know, you can only see my shoulders, so you don't know about it, but um, I'm very feminine looking. so they're like, you be the seductress. And I'm like, <laughs> no, cannot do. Like, I basically just like, they realized there were no roles for me and just didn't act for a really long time because like anytime I would think about auditioning for a show, I'm like, yeah, there are two female characters in that show and I don't want to play either of them because they're just not good characters. And like, I know various directors in the area and I'm like, yeah, you're not gonna cast me as a man. You're not gonna like change the gender of this character. Like there, there's nothing here for me to do. So I was like, well, I also like technical theater. So I guess I'm gonna go do costume design now. And that's how I'll, 
I'll deal with my wanting to do theater and um, not wanting to play those roles. So I just felt I, entirely like pushed out because I didn't want to play the characters that they were willing to give me. I completely feel that because um, that's actually why I started doing drag weirdly enough yeah. is because I finally could do the roles I could do the songs I could do all of these things that I wasn't going to be able to do in an actual show because there's no way in hell that they were going to cast me in it I mean I played Ralph from Reefer Madness and that was so Ooh. much fun we just did Mary Sunshine me and my best friend it was ridiculous it was so funny I got to sing the song that I wanted to sing and I've never, I've, I've fought with theater on that my entire life because high school, I was conveniently all of these fun roles that were actual male roles because they needed to fill in spots. But then once I got into professional and edu like in college theater, it turned into, no, we want to try to find your type. What are you? Which I was like, first off, rude. How dare you? Because it was all based off of your gender and your body. And that is the most ridiculous thing because I look like I'm 21. I am not. And for my entire life, I've looked older than I was. And so I always played the adult roles. I always played the, the parent roles, even though I was like 18. And then the moment I turned 25, all of a sudden I'm the high schooler, which I'm like, oh, why? Like, can I not be the high schooler one more time? I'm okay with being an adult now. Um, I actually can act like an adult because I know what an adult is, unlike being an 18 year old and playing adult. And I think that's the biggest struggle I have is like, I started stage managing and doing drag because- I still love theater. I still want to be a part of it, but I'm not going to find a role that I'm going to like. And then you're going to cast me in because I want to be bloom in producers, but you're not going to cast me in that. I'd be great. I'd be brilliant is that role, but the gender and body type is going to hinder so much casting, which is frustrating especially in a profession where you're literally becoming a new character. Why are we typecasting when you could literally do anything you want if you just let people be the amazing actors that they are? Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for sharing, Pan. I feel that on a spiritual level. I could literally have a TED talk about it. Yeah. No one wants to hear it right now. <laughs> I'm gonna um, hear it. <laughs> we'll do a second recording it'll be fine um so what we're gonna move on we're gonna move on to um some of our hopes of future so I would like to hear what you would like theater to go where would you like to see theater and how would you like to see it improved so whoever wants to yeah I feel like especially oh sorry <laughs> can we both go at the same time Pam? <laughs> excitement everyone's like yes let me let me talk <laughs> right um okay cool so well it's really how I feel about this bounces off exactly what you were just talking about Sammy with casting because I've been put in situations where and it, sometimes it's even out of the control of the directive and creative team I, I was put in a situation once where I was on, in callbacks for company for Amy which was really exciting you know look I didn't want to have to tell you like <laughs> I was so ready for that like I could sing it I could sing it like even in the right octave and everything and like it was because it's you know it's fun and speaking and pattery and like you know this get kind of high but I have some of that in like a, a quick speaking range you know and I was really excited for that opportunity. And I think that even like the creators of the show really wanted to move it in that direction. Um, but then the, you know, the rights holders like came back and were like, well, no, you can't, you can't change this. You can't do that. Uh, you can't put someone of this gender in like this gender thing, blah, blah, blah. So they had to you know, like make a different decision with casting. And I think part of it had to also do with, you know, they were opening a new production on the West End where they were like completely rewriting Jamie's char Amy's character to be Jamie. Um, but they, it, it was really kind of interesting 
to be stuck in that place too. And that's where I'd like to see theater to go is this separation of the idea of being so stuck in a gender for a character. I really love the work that, um, especially like a lot of the Shakespeare companies in England are doing right now, like the Royal Shakespeare Company and the Globe, um, the way that they approach gender in their casting. And I guess it's a lot easier with Shakespeare because, you know, there isn't somebody that holds the rights. But I want to see more of that. And especially I want to see more of that because I think a lot of people get stuck to and well, okay, maybe I can't necessarily sing that. Like that's that key isn't good for me. Well, then change the key. You know, it's not that hard. Take it down a little bit, take it up a little bit. Like may if if you are motivated in your own life to want to tell a story, then you should be able to tell that story in, in any institution or key or anything that's holding you back from telling that story needs to readdress itself you know we shouldn't be put into the boxes of what we were you know dealt we should be taking those boxes and like expanding them or like shredding them because boxes are silly anyway i love that and i completely agree especially because the only cinderella i like is the brandy version yes i've watched it multiple times since it got on disney plus and i realized the only reason why i like it is because it's lower like the key is completely yeah. down and it sounds so much better in my opinion, because you can actually hear the words and you can like, I love that it's not this high soprano that you can barely really tell what is going on and you can have more emotion in it. Like, I feel like we need to be revamping theater because we can. And if it's not a, able to revamp, create it. Let's let's stop doing all these. Stop doing Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. No one ever needs to watch that ever, 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 ever again. No one needs to. Please. I've done it twice and I didn't even like it the first time. I know. I know. I grew up in Idaho. What do you expect? Um, but yeah, I completely agree on that. Um, Pam, I'm going to let you share your your thoughts. Yeah. My, my thing is just I want directors I want casting directors to just like sit there and think and be like does the gender of this character matter because I would say like 99% of the time it does not matter so like just cast people who have the talent and like can do amazing work with you and then you'll have like a unique show that no one's ever seen before because you're like yeah, I let I let a woman play that role. I let this non-binary person be the main character. Like different people are going to bring entirely new perspectives to like the character and like you're missing out on that if you're like, "Ah, yes, the script says he." So um obviously we have to stay with that. Like directors and artistic directors are making crazy choices all the time to just be like oh yeah no we're gonna just set this in a completely different time period but gender we gotta we gotta keep those shakespeare in space why, why? shakespeare in space but macbeth that's a man right there. <laughs> we're not in a theater so i can say it it's fine um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's yes, like I, it's, I completely agree huge it's, frustration yeah uh, and it's it's no there's no need for it right now because we have the capabilities of telling a wonderful story and at the end of the day that's what theater is is telling a wonderful story whether it's tragic whether it's fun whether it's musical it's we're we're storytellers and why can't we use our imagination and have our audience use theirs that's why they're coming to theater i hope to use their brain. So thank you so I, much, Dan. I am a fan of shock value and um, I don't usually use it that much, but I do think it would be appropriate <clears throat> in certain ways. Now, if I got to direct Godspell, Jesus would be trans uh, right Ooh, off the bat. Yes, um, I love that. I think that would be exciting. And if I, if I directed Rent, Maureen would be trans. <gasps> oh, I love that. Because I think that would work. I've thought that since the 90s. I think it would be cool even today. I don't know if those are ever going to happen, but if they did, that was that would be my mindset. There was a time where switch casts were popular. 
Um, I don't know if it was just an underground thing. I don't think anybody, uh, other than like, you know, charity concerts, things like that, there would only always be like, um, you know, the bad girls show where it's all guys and singing, you know, poor unfortunate souls and stuff like that. And that, that still resonates a little today, but I think if we're going to talk about Utah theater, I love the idea and it just it was something I just have thought for years of having, I, I love the idea of like Godspell and hair. Not only do they never happen in Utah, but they, um, when they do, they play it as safe as possible. <laughs> and neither of those shows are supposed to be safe. Godspell maybe, but not really. And I love the idea of having just whatever you want. You know, you can be, uh, it doesn't even, you can be a furry. I don't care. You know what I mean? It's just... <laughs> You can just do all of that. And I think personally, that's the future that I want to see. I want to see where it doesn't matter. I want to see women playing Hedwig. I want to see women playing Frankenfurter. Uh, maybe not so much um, Laverne Cox, but that's, that's not because of who, what, who or what she is. I just didn't like her decisions <laughs> that she that made. That whole show was a mess. That whole show was a mess. It was unnecessary. We'll just put it that yeah, it, was it was completely unnecessary. Yeah, but um, and that's you know, Rocky Horror is like dear to my heart because you know when I was in high school, Frankenfurt, it's like I'm like, am I this okay? This pre-internet, folks, <laughs> and um, I'm like, am I a crossdresser? You know, and then I would look at Frankenfurter and be like, well, that's not what I am. <laughs> that's not me. But you know, so it was always kind of like this thing in, in my mind. But I I just want to see. I want to see where it doesn't matter. I want to see, I love the idea. Like there are certain roles. Okay. No, unless you're amazing. I don't see anybody who's trans playing Belle and Beauty and the Beast. I don't see it. Not saying it's impossible. I, I would love beyond belief to see that. Love it. Um, I know somebody, see, when I was in LA, I just moved, to, I just moved here from LA a couple of years ago and I grew up in Utah, but I, it's a long story. Anyway, I auditioned for Grey Gardens and I didn't, I, I hit all the notes and did all of that. It wasn't little Edie, big Edie. It was cause there's no, I'm not a soprano. And, um, I, they were, they loved everything I did, loved it, but they were like, I just don't know what to do with you because I want to cast you, but I, I, we just can't. And it wasn't like a, we don't want a gross tranny, you know, I know that's a bad word, but that's kind of like the way people talk. <laughs> still um and especially in LA it's strange that word still comes around but um we don't want that kind of thing we want uh you know traditional but we're really progressive so we want to do this you know and I'm like well then why are you even telling me just just either do it or don't you know and I think the idea of being able to do that should just be the future it should just be like okay Sounds good. Um, a female beast. Hey, why not? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. I agree. I think it's, I think the biggest thing right now is we need to have more representation than just Hedwig and Frankenfurter as a trans character. And I think uh -huh. that's the biggest thing is we need to, it's the same with um, having a color conscious casting now is we don't need to have that token black person. I've been in. No so many damn times i am the ultimate token black person in idaho um but i don't want to have to go to a show and be like okay i can count how many genders are in this show i can tell i can see that there is no actual expression of the actor it is all what the script they think needs to say and I feel like if we have more representation of non-binary folks, of trans folks actually being themselves in shows, I think that is, we owe it to our audiences and we owe it to the people that are going to grow up and do theater to see that representation and not just have to go and see Rocky Horror to see that representation. I think that's very important nowadays of actually showing the people that are in the shows and what their lives are on stage very important yeah and i can ex i can 
explain, I can say all of that to you and all of you, and you totally get it. But to be a contrarian, I would give anything to play Hedwig or Frankenfurt. Oh, hell's yeah. <laughs> hell's yeah. I want to play Hedwig so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah. I so now just want an entire Hedwig. furry version of Godspell. I am ready. I will build those I'm, costumes. I'm for it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't understand why it wasn't that to begin with, to be perfectly right? honest. I feel like that's <laughs> exactly how he meant it to be. I love it. Awesome. Yeah, I was gonna, that's the point I was gonna bring up is representation because um, even if it's just like, because there's gonna be new shows always coming, right? And even if it's mm-hmm years in the future and we can if people were to write more characters that were more tailored towards either if it's a non-binary character or even if it's just a character that is more that's easier to adjust it's not like strictly like female or something you know and but I agree with what everyone said and Fun fact, I did Godspell in high school. So that was Ooh. Jealous. I'm so jealous. Where was, where, what, what state? Was that Utah? Utah, yeah. Really? That, yeah. That's a surprise. That, well, that's a surprise. I, I went to a really small uh, performing arts high school, like a charter school. Oh, right? that makes sense. Yeah. Did you go to spa? That'll do it. Uh, for one year. But uh, <laughs> the... The Godspell, it, it, our school actually shut down. It was called Pioneer High School. For the oh, wow. The show shut the school down? No, the school, uh, the state like pulled their funding or something. And oh, that's like, lame. Like, we're shutting your school down. <laughs> anyway. They're like, we hate this show. We're pulling, <laughs> we're pulling the license. How dare you? You don't get any education now. How yeah. dare you? <laughs> we asked for Bye Bye Birdie and you gave us Godspell. How mm-hmm. dare you? <laughs> um thank you so much i think that uh i agree with all of our ideas and thoughts on where future or where theater should go in the future and how it should be improved um what i would like to know right now is what do you do in your work that creates a safe place for other trans artists because i know that there's a lot of progression um and a lot of things that are changing in theater but i I would like to know what you're doing in your positions to kind of help create that progressiveness. Well, I think it goes without saying, if I did something, like if I directed or produced or, or anything, uh, it's 100% inclusive. Yeah. Like you can, you know, and I think I, I can't imagine any of us not saying that, but I, I feel like um, even when I do artwork, like every single thing I do, every single thing is subconsciously and purposely uh, gender related. And I'll, I'll look at stuff that I did 10 years ago and I'll be like, why am I drawing boobs and that? You know, what's the deal with that? Like all over the place. And so that's subconscious, you know, I wasn't doing it to be a perv or anything. It was just, it was just a thing. And everything I think that I do, and I'm making a point of it, um, it doesn't have to be a trans thing. It can be any kind of uh, personal identity that somebody feels is important to them because it doesn't just have to be trans. It could be, well, it could be furries. (laughs) You know what I mean? There's legitimate furries. (laughs) And um, that's not just kink, but like straight up. And it's like, you know, uh, it, it, it's such a salt of life. It's like, you know, it's just, it makes everything so much better. And to repress all of that and to stop that in an artistic standpoint is nothing but dark ages. And I refuse to have anything to do with that. Refuse. And that's, that's mine. I love it. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, I was going to say, I've been in, productions before where they actually, you know, it's a new cast, may not have worked with some of the people or any of the people. And um, I have been in productions where they're like, okay, let's introduce ourselves and say our pronouns. So that's really helpful. Um, So 
I think it was you, Sammy, that said, like, you had awkward conversations with people about, like, your pronouns or something. And it's, like, Mm -hmm. if you can just, if everyone's saying it, it's so much easier. And it's, like, just gets it out of the way. But, um, and I also just try to, I'm pretty, I'm very open about my identity. And I just try to make sure I make anyone, um, everyone feel comfortable with me. And like, I don't know, I can usually tell if someone's kind of uncomfortable or not always, but you know, and um, I just try to reach out to people if I can, if they feel, if it seems like they're uncomfortable and make, just be friendly and, you know, just make it as safe with the space as I can, I guess. Agree. Yeah. That's what I like to do. I'm literally like too friendly sometimes. It's kind of obnoxious <laughs> and like so excited to see people and just have them feel as warm and welcomed with whoever they are and whatever they like in. And I definitely try to make it so especially as a stage manager, I try to make every space as comfortable with who the, that person is. So they, they know that automatically if there is an issue, they can come to me and be like, okay, this is the problem. And it'll be fixed in a appropriate manner and not just become a, you know, awkward situation. So I definitely strive to have that comfortability as well as have that's somewhat vulnerability in the fact that I'm very open and very willing to answer questions, to help um, to a certain you know extent, um, to make it so that it's not fallen on someone that is not comfortable with that yet, you know. So awesome, thanks, Miles. Anyone else? Yeah, I uh, to continue that like I feel like even in spaces where pronouns aren't a mad automatically part of the conversation like I always force them in there like you know if if someone is like okay we're all gonna go around and say our name and then and then I'm like and pronouns you know like I'm not afraid to jump it in and make sure that everyone says it because I think it's important um to not feel ostracized by the only person needing to have their pronouns like mentioned yeah um but it, it, it that's like usually in kind of an overall realm um when I'm choreog when I'm a choreographer and when I'm choreographing things especially in partnering I really like to forget about gender and partnering because I feel like partnering in dance is often so deeply gendered um I I always like I'm like okay well this is part you know this is part a this is part b or part one part two and I like almost refuse to put you know like consistently uh woman in part a and then man in part b you know i like i like always just make sure that i fit what bodies i think like would share weight best and like work together and a a good choreographer is able to work with the bodies that they have not to try to fit something to a quota that they want it to achieve so that's all a really big thing for me and just trying to get people to i think as pan kind of mentioned earlier like take gender out of it like does it matter right now you know like if it does if like gender is like a very important part of this story and like what we're telling then great let's actually really talk about that and why gender is important but if not then like forget about it (laughs) i love that so much especially because I'd rather throw someone that is lighter than have a guy try to lift me up. Nope, ain't happening. No, 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 no. That's the most terrifying thing ever. Um, Awesome. Thank you so much, Jay. Yeah. Um, Pan, do you have any thoughts? Especially since you're a costumer. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. (laughs) Their, vo- their video? video is freezing. Okay, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, well, I, I don't care if my video is not working. If you can hear me, that's the important thing. Um, so uh, costume design wise, usually, I mean, I'm just myself when I'm there. I'm like, hello, I'm non-binary. That's what this means. Also, 
yeah. <laughs> um, so usually that opens the floor for other people if they need to talk about gender and pronoun things. But a lot of people are just like, I don't know what that is. So mm -hmm. I'm always like prepared to have a little like, let me educate you on, on what the, some gender things. Um, but also like for me, I am, for instance, not afraid to go to a different section of the clothing store whenever I'm like buying stuff. Like obviously I have, I take people's measurements. I don't go, you're a men's small. I can only find your clothes in men's small or whatever. Like it doesn't make any sense to do that. And honestly, I've found some amazing stuff for some of my male actors in the women's section, like beautiful perfect items just mm, um things like that and um personally like i have um tailoring skills and i also know how to um size up and size down patterns so like if it's not a usual thing for somebody to like find clothes in their size i'm like don't worry about it i got it like i know how to do this i can do it for you um I have no issues there. Um, and that's usually the kind of thing that I have had to deal with. Um, this isn't a theater thing, but I've actually been doing some tailoring on the side since um, I am not involved with any theater projects for the past year or so because, you know, COVID. Um, so I've been, I have tailored a wedding suit for a lesbian couple that were getting married um and then another some some gender non-conforming people and getting like their clothes like custom tailored because they're like yeah men's clothes like the sleeve length is always too long it's always too like wide but like I like the overall look of it and I don't want to buy the things from the women's section because the fit is all wrong and um like these are the kind of things that I've been involved with outside of theater you know you know sometimes I can bring into the theater world um for a while there, we never actually ended up doing it, but I was um, doing like some theoretical mock-ups of uh, non-binary maternity wear. So that fun. was fun. That's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a really interesting and very like collaborative process because the person that I was designing the clothes for was, you know, they, they were pregnant then. And I was like, I don't know that any of this is gonna happen before <laughs> when you need it but it is like a really cool thing to like sit and consider because honestly if you look at a lot of the maternity stuff it's either like you get jeans and a shirt or it's like the most femme thing that you've ever seen and they're just like this is not for me yeah and yeah. um yeah making making clothes is a fun time also i know because we actually at uh, another we did recently do Hedwig um, learned where to find all of the extra 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 large women's shoes so yes <laughs> I love that I I appreciate uh your thoughts on inclusive costuming because being as big as I am I've had se several bad experiences with costumers who are like this is a potato sack that we're going to put a belt on. Yay. And so I appreciate Ooh. having the, I know, right? Yeah. And I appreciate the thoughts it's of so like, crazy. I know. And it's like, it's the same as choreography. If you're, you're a good choreographer with the bodies that you have the capabilities and the talents. You're a good costumer with the bodies that you have and your talents. If you don't utilize what you have, then what's the point? It's not helpful to anyone. It's hurtful for people that have to constantly experience it. Um, I know I'm always frustrated when it comes to clothes because I fit or whatever, slim fit, hate it. Absolutely hate it. Like it doesn't fit me. I'm not going to ever like like a a woman's t-shirt that is slim fit. Um, I would rather get one from, you know, the men's section of Target because I know that at least it fits my body correctly. And so I think 
focusing on the body type and how to dress it correctly is important. I think that's the thing that should be more focused in theater is making it look good on the person that you're you're giving that costume to rather than <laughs> what gender they are. So, oh no, we just lost Pan. I think oh. uh, hopefully they'll be back. <laughs> They're poor internet. Um, while we're waiting for Pan, um, we'll let them know as soon as they get back. But I just want to uh, do our final question. And um, the final question I have is, what advice would you like to give to trans artists pursuing careers in theater? I love all the thinking faces. This is my favorite. Well, I, okay. <clears throat> Cause I'm coming from two different times. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, I would have said, just uh, be ready. Um, and ex I hate saying this, but accept what's gonna happen. But, and I, that still might be kind of true. Um, I, I just, I, I think it just a hundred percent depends on who and where and like another theater. No, I would never say that, but, um, other theaters probably, um, and, and you know, and it even scares me now. Like there's certain theaters I just don't think I can audition for because I, and I ask people, you know, this such and such, would I be accepted? And that might be coming from an old place, but I think it's still prevalent and to an extent, maybe. And sometimes they say no, and a lot of times they say yes. I'm not sure they would know though. But I think that, um, I, I think my advice nowadays would be do exactly what you want, because <clears throat> I, I mean, you don't, and I said this in, in another one, you don't have to, if you're, if you're male to female trans, I'll just say that because that's my experience. Um, you don't have to get, I, I, keep, I keep bringing up this example, but Belle, you don't have to be cast as Belle to be <clears throat> validated. And you don't have to, even, you know, I guess if you want to do theater and you only want to play women, then you're going to have a pretty tough time. Not impossible. Um, and, and especially now it's very realistic, I suppose. Um, but I think like if I was, if I, if I went and auditioned for something and I was cast as a man, as long as it wasn't like, you know, it, like if it wasn't something ridiculous, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like Gaston or something, even yeah. though then I think that would be, I could probably do that and make it. Funny. I think you I would know. be a bomb Gaston. Just, yeah, just, maybe. <laughs> I mean, you did Cartwright. You could be a bomb Gaston. That'd be you know, fun. funny, funny enough. I did Mr. Kodai. Um, from She Loves Me, and I I did it like um, like Phil Hartman, so it was more Ew. like you know like yeah a, I love that movie, like almost creepy <laughs> I don't know it was just funny like that like is that Brannigan even I know that's not Phil Hartman but just like the idea of like this completely self absorbed and I I didn't do it campy but you know this is this is here nor there but it's just like if you want to just play girly girl female characters be ready to not do those yeah. and not be cast as that I, I don't think we're there yet I think we could um unless it's specific unless it's like we are only hiring trans actors for such and such um but just be just do what you find the character to be and that would be funny not funny I mean I'm a comedian so funny but if you're serious, if you have the dance, if you can, if you have the dancing chops to do um, female stuff, that's amazing. And you have my ultimate respect because that's been my dream. I mean, when I was like six years old, I told my mom I wanted to do ballet. And of course that was, you know, what? <laughs> but because I've known I was trans since I was like five, but it's, it's like, um, if, if you want to do that for a fantasy wise, then hooray. Um, if you want to do it for a self-fulfillment, then hooray. Um, but if you want to do it and not be realistic, then ooh, 
let's let's still try to be realistic folks that's what i that's what that's my opinion i like it thank you so much danielle sure. i would say to continue that thought danielle like looking forward would be to like urge people to continue pushing the boundary on that so that we can get to the spot where we all want to be where you know it would be wildly acceptable for an m to f individual to like play bell you know um and they're not being like there are uber amounts of roles of like you know, I have, everyone has their like dream roles list, um, you know, and I, I love looking to see where mine has grown because it involves genders and all different kinds of characters. Um, you know, I, I feel like Rose and Dogfight and Eponine and Les Mis, but then I'm also like Marius and Les Mis <laughs> and like all the, you know, totally it's, it's, just, it's just so expanding and I want everyone to continue to push the envelope and like continue to to fight it and do it at all and every cost like to never stop being themselves and to never um you know not taking no for an answer some of the time you know obviously casting comes down to casting and you have to accept rejection and no's but not like getting caught in the okay well this theater you know um isn't going to think this way blah 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 and it makes safe spaces for yourself because there are some not safe spaces. There are places within Utah that haven't like necessarily created safe spaces, but know that there are also places if you do feel safe to continue like bugging them until <laughs> like, you know, at my undergrad, like I was finally cast in a, a female role in my senior year. I ended up breaking my foot and couldn't do the dance role, but it was a dance hall hostess in Sweet Charity. Um, and that was really exciting. And although there is like a whole other microaggression list of like seeing trans people as only sex workers, but like, it was still cool that I was getting to play like a cis character. And I, it was like, I, you know, I was gonna be like a, a Carmen in the show and that was really exciting. And so, but it took, it took, three or four years of me being like you know uh, okay fine you won't give me amy like but like let me let me just like keep annoying you and keep bugging you and keep saying i want this until you get it and everyone should keep pushing that envelope as comfortably and safely as they can yeah i completely agree i love that thank you so much pan we're back i'm glad you're back we missed you mm -hmm. um we're just discussing your advice for future trans artists um, pursuing careers in theater. So if you wanna give your advice, um, Miles also hasn't gone or I haven't gone either. So you have some time, every single person when I asked that, we're like, hmm. So you have time to do your hmm to think about it. <laughs> I mean, I could go right now. Um, awesome. For one thing, I totally did what Jay did um, back back in high school. That is how, since um, we've talked about furries quite a few times, um, I got to play every single sheep in um, my high school's production of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Thank you. Ooh. I have I a that. very cute picture of me on my Facebook in my, my sheep outfit going like, bah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's great. Um, <laughs> um, but basically, I don't know if anybody else has already said it, but like, be the person that your past self needed. Mm, I love that. In mm. the world. Like that is generally how I operate, but like, especially when it comes to things where you like, we need visibility. You just gotta be the person that you wish that you saw when you were a kid. Um, and I think, you know, in some ways I'm doing that. And in other ways I'm like, I could have a little bit more improvement. Uh, <laughs> The other thing that I have advice for is like, don't let your perception of like what your gender is supposed to be stop you from doing the things that you love. Like I did not learn to sew until I was like in college because I was like, no, sewing is girly and I hate girly, ew, ew, ew. Um, but I love it. And I love being able to improve people's lives through sewing. And like, for me, I think the best part of the show is the first day that everybody gets their costumes on. Um, mm -hmm. That first dress rehearsal is just like, 
a beautiful blossoming and like suddenly everything is a show because I watch those other dress rehearsals and I'm like I mean this has potential but then as soon as you know they put my clothes on everybody's like wow it's a show now and I'm like "Mm -hmm. yeah it is I I knew it would be but just needed one little magic pan ingredient um (laughs) and then in general I just also like to um queer things as much as I possibly can get away with just anytime I can just like Jay was saying just push that envelope just a little just a little bit more it doesn't have to be huge every time could you just do it just a tiny bit as a treat um but yeah I love that I love that so much the first dress rehearsal with com- uh, with costumes is literally Christmas for me I get so excited it's like when everything finally is completed. You got the lights, you got the mic, you got the wig, you got the costume, you're set. I love it. Awesome. Thank you so much for your advice, Pan. Um, Miles, do you have any advice? Oh, uh, yeah. I was trying to think. Um, <laughs> I would say that, well, when I first came out, um, I don't know. I was kind of discouraged doing theater a little bit. It was... Um, it was just frustrating, you know, like the, we have talked about the frustrations of doing theater, being trans or non-binary. Um, but um, I would say be proud of who you are and don't view it as something, you're, don't view your identity as something that's holding you back or even as a weakness. Play to your strengths and to your unique qualities that you have and you know I don't exactly do theater as much as a career anymore I do it more as a hobby and I left the theater career um, for other reasons but don't let your identity be the reason and your frustrations be the reason you leave theater if you are thinking about it because like if you're passionate about it and you're determined you can make it happen. And um, you, you know, like Danielle said, you know, sometimes you have to adjust your expectations sometimes, but, um, you know, we are progressing and in our, in the theater world. And I think that just, yeah, be proud of who you are, advocate for yourself and, um, yeah, love yourself. I don't know. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. I, I completely agree. I think my advice would be to find your support because I think that's the biggest thing is finding the people that love you no matter what, especially in a career where you are constantly giving and giving and giving and giving. And you need to have those people that are giving back. And I that's important to me. I know that that's helped me throughout the years to just keep going and also just be the storyteller that you want to be no matter what no matter your body type your skin color your identity I think that is what theater should start going back to is that deep down you're a storyteller and you're just sharing stories no matter what I love that awesome well you all have been wonderful. I really appreciate you sharing your stories and giving us a chance to hear your voices and give um, people other chances to learn from your stories and your voices. So I think that's it. You've been wonderful. Danielle, you went and grabbed something. So I'm interested what you grabbed. Oh, I went and somebody put something under my door. Oh, <laughs> I think it was, I think it was a neighbor that uh, it's, it's nothing. Okay. <laughs> it's nothing exciting, I promise. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for joining. And anyone that watches this, thank you for joining as well and listening to our stories. Um, definitely check out another theater and um, donate if you can. So, okay, we're done.